Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Rook 2020 Mark II or MK2 release. Um, I want to thank Canrog for doing all the CAD work here. I kind of told him my thoughts um, and I helped him design the new tool head for Mark II and we're both very happy with how this release has turned out. I think this is kind of like the final polished form of the Rook 2020 um, and it's really really cool printer. So to start I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters and all my YouTube members. Uh, you're really helping the channel a lot. Uh, my job hunt is definitely going very slowly so I really do appreciate the support. I do have five official episodes now for my Fusion Tutorial series on YouTube membership and on Patreon. So if you're interested in Fusion Tutorials and designing 3D printers, check out those videos. And thanks again, everyone, for all your support. It really means a lot. I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, PCB Way. Thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Do you know that PCBWay offers more services than PCBs? They do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. Let's take a look at the 3D printing. Here we can upload one of the Bastion STL files. Let's do the belt lock. As you can see, we can choose the material type, the quantity, we can even choose colors, and we get an instant quote. For your next project, definitely check out PCBWay at PCBWay.com. Thanks again so much for PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Let's get into this uh, update. So, what's new on the printer? Probably the very first thing you're going to notice is no belts in view and no 2020 extrusion at the top. First and foremost, I have decided to go with blind joints on my frame. I'm trying to do that across the board with all my 3D printers. It simplifies the build materials a lot and it gets rid of low quality corner joints and things like that. I think blind joints are, it's a much simpler build for the frame and I think it makes a lot of sense. This frame here is a frame from DLL PDF they actually have some frames ready to go or they have their page ready to go for Rook Mark II frames. These extrusions are made in the USA and he offers one, over 100 different colors. So if you want a really cool unique frame that's high quality and made in the USA, check out the link in the description below. I'll have a link to his Rook 2020 Mark II web page so that you can order yourself a frame. If you want a custom color, feel free to join his Discord or contact him and he will get you set up with a really cool color. His frames are powder coated, so that's why he can offer so many different colors in, with his frames. Uh, and I'm very happy with mine. It's very high quality and um, like I say, the benefit of powder coating is there's so many different color options. It does look different than anodized. Um, you'll find the center of the extrusion is, is definitely lighter because it's harder for the powder coating to get into the center of the extrusion. But the big benefit is you can have pretty much whatever color you want. So very, very happy with the frame here. And like I say, go check his uh, website out in the description there. So brand new kind of frame with blind joints very very nice we have also moved all of the belts to the back so the front view of the printer is much cleaner much nicer you can see your print better very very happy with that i think the belts are much easier to run this way as well you can set your pulley height much easier it's just it's just a nice quality of life improvement um, i'm very happy with this you do need eight more bearings if you're going to the Mark II. So basically order a 10 pack of F695s. 
um, you do need eight total bearings uh, more for the new belt path. So, you know, there is always a drawback to kind of anything. There's pros and cons, but I think it's definitely worth it and you'll get a much cleaner look with the belt path. There is a brand new tool head. So this is basically a carryover from my RC150 printer. I have kind of put together a simplified tool head with a 5015 fan. This is very much inspired by the Bamboo Labs printer. Now that we have so much more room in the front, I could add a 5015 fan in the front here and get decent cooling out of that. So this tool head has that for cooling, very, very nice. This still does support the Rookery made by Gulsifer and also the Sentinel direct drive extruder by Kenrog. So there are three fully supported tool heads on this. We did not change the belt cradle in the back. So like I say, most any mods that use the existing belt cradle will work no problem. A really nice benefit to this extruder though is it is both Bowden and direct drive with the same part. Um, Canrog did a really good job with making the uh, direct drive base here able to accept a Bowden collet so that you can use Bowden and direct drive. I actually built my Mark II prototype Bowden first and then within 15 minutes I switched it over to direct drive which is really really cool and a really big benefit to this tool head. The tool head does support Sherpa Mini mounting location, so you can run a Sherpa Mini extruder or you can run the HGX Lite extruder. I've made the HGX Lite extruder a um, default spec now for the Mark II, so it's a very inexpensive all-metal extruder with a motor. Um, I use them on all my printers now and uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy with them, so you'll see that on the build materials. Of course, the link to my printables page for this printer is in the description below. You can find the updated building materials for this printer. Um, so definitely check that out. Basically what we did was we changed the gantry of the printer. The Z is the same, the bottom panels are the same. We did update the feet. So the feet here are a small update so that you can fit a Meanwell 200 power supply in the bottom if you wanted. I still do highly recommend uh, building this with just an AC adapter. This is the simplest and cheapest way to build a Rook is with a 24 volt, 8 amp AC adapter. These are like $24 Canadian on Amazon. Um, the wiring is much easier, that type of thing. Essentially, you're gonna be using an XT60 connector. If anyone's into remote control hobbies, you'll know the XT60 connector. Um, is a very, very great option. You're not dealing with 110 volts here. It's just 24 volts. So it's great for beginners and it's a great cheap option. And then that way you don't need to have, you know, the power supply at the bottom and you have much more room. But I mean, well, 200 does just fit in the bottom now. So that's really nice there. Um, so that's kind of my recommendation there, but basically not a whole lot has changed. Most of the parts that you already have will work for the Rook MK2. Very happy with that. Like I say, I'm very happy with um, how this has turned out and a huge thanks to Canrog um, for doing the work on this printer. Uh, he is part of the Rolohan design team and you know, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be able to go on and do other uh, projects while he kind of updated some existing stuff. So. This is very cool. I'll probably show a quick walk around um, a little bit more of the printer here at the end of the video, just so you can see the tool head a little bit better. Um, there are some additions that I haven't even printed on this printer. Like there's um, kind of a new wiring um, addition to the Z idler here. So you can actually zip tie all your wiring in Bowden and um, filament path all the kind of on the back there, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, I'll just kind of show the printer off a little bit more. So. Thanks everyone for really making the Rook and Rook 2020 so popular. We're super close to hitting 200 serials for this. I know there's a lot more printers out there that aren't serialed um, and the community is just growing and growing and growing. I do plan on having some 
Mark II frames on AliExpress available, as well as LDO is going to be offering some Rook Mark II frames as well. Canrog also does have a really awesome video on how to do blind joints yourself. So it's very easy to do your own blind joints with just a simple M5 tap for a drill or and some cutting oil. You're, you're basically good to go. I will link his video in the description below. His video is also on the printables page for this printer as well. So let's go ahead and do a really quick walk around of the printer so you can get a better look at it. And um, thanks everyone for watching the video and subscribing and commenting. All right, here we go. A quick little overview, overview of Mark II. Um, you can see, uh, you know, very nice, clean, polished look to it. Um, I didn't mention the videos, but obviously the tensioners are now in the front. Really easy to get access to these to actually tension your belts. Makes that much easier. You can see the tool head now definitely um, sticks out more in the front because we have all this room in the front. Very inspired by my uh, Bamboo Labs uh, printer there. I absolutely guarantee you there's way more optimization you could do with the fan ducts. Uh, they're pretty basic. We can see the HGX light extruder here that I'm using in direct drive. We can see the new rear motor mounts on the back here. They, I think they're much stronger. They move the motors inward and more back into the frame. So much closer into the frame. Canrog did design a new Z idler that has an opening on the back. So you can put a zip tie around here and have all your wiring going through the back. Obviously, I'm not a wiring pro, um, but definitely check that out. And uh, like I said, there's no changes to the bottom plate here or the Z or anything like that. Um, I kind of just printed out a Cali Cat here. You can see really nice cooling there. Really, really nice prints on this printer. Um, but yeah, that's a quick overview and a closer look at the Rook 2020 Mark II. Thanks everybody for watching.